Yeah, hi guys, it's just Morris here. Um, actually, I've got Josh Nash. And how you going, Josh? Good, man. How you going? So, you want to spend some time with us just showing uh, your story? It'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yes. Yeah, well, um, I gave my testimony the other day in church, so I just sort of run up past this again. Because, um, as a young kid, I didn't really have a father, and that, you know, generated a lot of hate in me. And just got worse and worse until I was about 13 years old, where I was just doing drugs on a daily basis, stealing cars, pretty much getting arrested weekly, causing like massive amounts of stress for my family. And by the age of 16, I escalated that to a whole new level. Ended up robbing a um, petrol station at Knife Point, and I just forfeited the rest of my teenage life to prison. And then I was released about 19, when I was 19, and um, ended up becoming a gang member, running a prostitution ring. And then I met um, the mother of my children at a tinny house. And then pretty much for the next seven years, I just like, dragged my kids up, just showed them a horrible life. And then, um, late last year, I ended up coming up to Nelson for my friend's son's birthday. And, um, well, and for drugs, I guess, as well. And, um, just real randomly, like, under all circumstances where I shouldn't have even seen my friend Hayden, we just both ended up in the same place. And we sat in his car for seven hours talking about God, which normally would make me want to hit him. But this night I just... I just listened, and then I remember one of the main things that got us talking is I remember saying, I don't understand what love is, you know, not really ever felt it in my life. But the first time in my life when I ever understood what unconditional love was, was when my daughter was born. I had only known her five seconds, and I already knew with all my heart I loved this child, like, no matter what ever happens. And then my friend Hedden goes, man, that's how God feels about you. And we were still talking throughout the night, and ended up going, well, I've made a lot of bad decisions, you know, enough over the night, but today I'm going to make a you know, right choice and go to church. So I, I said, okay, man, I'll come with you, but this is God's one chance to talk to me. So we get to the church, and I'm sitting there, you know, not really listening, just doing my thing. I hear this guy, Tony Saxon, just point at me and say, you in the hoodie. And he just went over everything we had talked about in the car as though he was there himself. And for me, I felt like, wow, man, how can God find me on this planet full with so many people and, like, take the time to reach out and talk to me? And it just really planted a seed in me. And then I went back to my home down in Waimati, where I was still selling methamphetamine, continuing to live the life, but it just all of a sudden started to feel hollow. Then one night I just realised, man, all I've done is just pretty much give these kids a real bad start to life and had been a real terrible partner. So I decided that's it, I have to get out, I have to just do something to change because it's just becoming too late. So I come up to Nelson where I met this awesome family where I'm staying on this island. And then, um, I decided about a week later that I had to get my kids to. I had to save them from that lifestyle. And um, I went down and got them. And then I started um, custody proceedings to try to keep them. And, like one of the nights we were here praying while my da oldest daughter was in bed. She came out and she talked to me and she was like, um, Dad, you just need to let go of your past and just look at the bright future, you know. We all love you. And then... Just at times when I feel like my faith is so brittle and so small, and seeing like undoubted faith in my child's eyes is just amazing to me. It just keeps me going. And um, as we're going for court, you know, we have to prepare my daughter. Like, there's a chance she might have to go back home with your mum. And she goes, "Nah, I've talked to my God, and that's not going to happen." And then, like that very same day, I got given custody, and I just feel like, "Wow, man, God's really shifting in my life and doing these things for me." And like. For me, I guess the moral of it is that, you know, we've got to keep sticking at this even when times are hard because, you know, God is real. God does love us, you know what I mean? And just thank you for hearing my message. Awesome. And um, how long have you been out here for, this beautiful place? Um, about four months now, three and a half, four months, yeah. And the children are visiting? Mm -hmm. Your kids are visiting here? No, they're living with me now. I've got oh. custody. Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. But they love the place. It's beautiful. Yeah. Couldn't ask for anywhere better. Uh, awesome. Hey, well, thank you for today, Josh, and uh, we appreciate your words of, uh, and your message, cool. and hopefully it'll help others. Cool. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Cool, man. Thank you.